Hello, it's me, Ian, and welcome back to school for a new term. It's help, my supply teacher is still magic. You could say it's help, my supply teacher is magic too. This time it's even trickier. Once again, we've swapped regular teachers with magicians. And because you know them, we've disguised them. We've filmed the results with special cameras hidden in the classrooms, yeah. We've got more double bluffs than a fox going to a chicken's fancy dress party dress as a fox. We're also showing you loads of great tricks. Tricks like this. Watch as I magically dissect this orange into equal pieces. Uh, here's what's coming up. Fergus is undercover in this class of year threes. He does a trick about blood cells that will send their hearts racing. James is locked and loaded and up close and magical. You've been sending in clips of all your best magic tricks, and later on I will be picking my favourite. The wannabe wizards have wands, and they know how to use them. But first... Do you think you'd be able to tell if your teacher started doing magic? Do you? This is Fergus. He studies magic and now he's about to teach using it. The disguise is on. It's a white coat because he's been developing this trick at the lab. Enter year three. They don't know it yet, but they're about to get an amazing lesson about blood that will hit a rich vein of magic. So far, none of them have noticed the hidden cameras in their classroom or recognised Fergus as our magician. But will they buy his lesson about cells? Now, today, we're going to be doing a very exciting experiment with blood. You can see there's a, a fact file behind me which has got lots of really interesting things about blood. Let's see if they spot the magic in amongst the facts. Now, blood is very, very important. It means we can breathe, it means we can walk, it means we can eat, it means we can do everything to survive. Now, when scientists or doctors do experiments with blood, they use something called a Petri dish. Now, Petri dish is normally a lot smaller than this. No, there's nothing under that dish. But so everyone in this class can see I've got a much bigger bowl made of metal. I've also got something called a pipette. A pipette. Now, a pipette allows for blood to be sucked up, transferred, and put somewhere else. All scientifically correct so far, but this lesson's about to be sucked up and put somewhere else labelled magic. These are going to act as my blood cells, OK? So, the first part is to take one of those blood cells and to suck it up into the pipette. Ready? It's into the pipette. Now he's putting it under the dish. It goes under the Petri dish. We take the second, the second red blood cell, OK? Check out if you see it disappear this time. Watching closely. Goes into the pipette. And under the Petri dish. The last red blood cell goes exactly the same as the other ones. The pipette goes into the side of the hand. Takes the blood cell. Squeezing the pipette and squeezing the truth. And then we can place it under the Petri dish. All three blood cells. How cool is that? The class clearly believe that Fergus is teaching them real science, but they'll know it's magic soon and it'll all kick off. Sometimes we get an infection in the body. So you might have had a cold or the flu, a cough, something like that. The magic's about to spread like an infection too. That's going to be represented by a green cell. So imagine that's the infection goes into the Petri dish, right? OK, so the green ball is in the dish. And that goes in with all the other blood cells. Now the red balls have got in two. That's four balls. When the body is fighting an infection, do you know what happens? Those blood cells actually begin to start and multiply. only four balls and now there are loads. It doesn't stop until, look, the infection is totally formed. It's still going. <laughs> this lesson's been all thrills and blood spills, but now it's time for Fergus to spill the beans about his magical secret. Now, who thought that was cool? 
Was that the best experiment you've ever seen? Yeah! Good. Now, there is something I haven't actually told you, and that's I'm not actually a teacher, and I'm not really a scientist. I'm actually a magician. And all of you have been set up by your families, your friends, your school, and there's a camera there in the classroom, and there's a camera here, and there's a camera there, and you're all going to appear on a CBBC show called Help My Supply Teachers Magic! No wonder they're excited. That was a sensational trick. Let's hear how it made their pulses race. My favourite bit was when he made millions and millions of multiples of cells. Begin. He only started with four balls, and they just kept appearing. It was impossible to keep count. Thousands and thousands of balls came out. It's just like the whole building was going to explode. An explosive trick, and the class had no idea Fergus was a magician. How long would it take for you to shout? <laughs> Later on, you'll see what happened when Catherine went undercover at another school. She did a trick with sand that was anything but wet. Right now, though, James is at a farm and he's about to get up close and magical. OK, guys, I'm going to show you an absolutely fantastic trick, but I need to borrow a ring. Have you got a ring? Ring at all? Great. Okay. Keep your eye on that yeah. ring. We're going to keep this safe and secure in this hand. And you can see, if I wrap my fingers slowly around the ring, is there any way that ring could leave my hand? That ring is going nowhere, right? Especially when you can see from the top, you can see from the bottom. In fact, you can see all angles. Would you roll up my sleeve? Just there. Excellent. And hold on to my wrist, making it impossible. Okay. So you have complete control at the moment, and there's no way that ring can leave my hand. Watch. I blow, see the ring completely disappears. Whoa, the ring's disappeared. How is that possible? But there's more. Did you see where I went? No. No, that might be a problem. Ah, wait. No need to worry, because the ring is still safe and secure. In fact, just here, does that ring look familiar? It's locked. Oh, <laughs> it's locked secure on this combination padlock. Now, the only way you can open this lock is if you know the correct combination. And if the numbers aren't right, it won't open. Now, unfortunately, I don't know what the combination is. Uh, but maybe you could help me. So if you take the padlock and think of any random four numbers. Put them in. And give it a little pull. Does it open? No. Ah. But wait, seeing as you're in control, it only makes sense that we make this personal to you. Now, I'd never ask a woman how old she is, especially on TV, but if you could put in the year of your date of birth... Now, before you open that padlock, nobody has asked you before how old you are, and we've never met and we've no, never set anything up. No. If you just pull that padlock, take the ring off, the ring's been returned, the padlock undone, but James's secret is safe. <laughs> that trick was absolutely amazing. Now Catherine's going to set you a magical challenge in tricks of the trade. If you fancy yourself as a magician, here's a trick you can try on your mates. Catherine's got a large cup, a plastic card, three ten-pence coins like these, and a jug of water. With the plastic card balancing on the edge of the cup like this, Catherine will show you how to balance the three coins on this end of the card without them falling off. Can you work out how to do it? Keep watching and you'll find out later in the show. It's going to be incredible. Right now, we have something amazing for you. This is the interactive illusion. This is a trick where you can take part at home. So come on, you need to pay close attention. So come out over here, right next to the TV. If you haven't got a TV, just come close to the radio. We're not on the radio. Well, maybe just the computer. Just watch closely. You ready? Good. Start by placing your finger on any of these animals 
in this row here. Now, spell out the animal that you have chosen, moving one space for each letter. You can move up or down, left or right, but not diagonally. If you had chosen camel, you would move your finger five spaces, spelling the word camel. C-A-M-E-L. Spell your animal now. I don't think you're on the horse, so we'll remove that. Now, move your finger five spaces. You can move up or down, left or right. That's great. OK, you're not on the badger or the cat, so we'll remove those. Now, move seven spaces, up or down, left or right. OK, so you're not on the camel or the lion. I'd like you to move five more spaces. OK, you're not on the fish. Now, move one more space. All done? So you started on an animal and you've moved to a random location. But I know you're thinking of a magician's favourite animal, a rabbit. Were you thinking, Rabbit? Now it's time to hear off to the farm where Fergus is getting up close and magical. Gemma, could you just say stop on a card for me? Stop. Lovely. I'd like to have a peek at this card and remember it. Mm -hmm. Have you got that? Yeah. And I'm just going to show it to the camera as well. It's the Three of Hearts. Remember that card. Now, I'm going to find your card in quite an unusual way. How long do you think it would take if I was to go through the cards, take out your card, put two holes in your card and then thread this chain through the card. How long do you think that would take me to do? Um, I think it would take you about, about um, half a minute. Half a minute? Three minutes. Not that fast. Maybe three minutes. Maybe between half a minute and three minutes. But what I want you to do is imagine I've already done it. So imagine you can see the card, you can actually visualise the card on the chain. What was the card? The three of hearts. The three of hearts, Gemma. Watch. One, two, Three, I just wave and can you see? Look, just rub the chain. Can you see that's gone right the way through the card? Whoa, let's get a rewind. Ooh. One, two, three. Fergus just made the card they chose appear threaded on the chain. That's amazing. Through the card. And actually, if I take the chain off and show the camera, you can see that that has gone all the way through wow. the card. Have a look. Magic. Isn't that cool? Yeah, marvelously cool. All we hardly okay. did was just wave it, grab the, the key chain, this and holding it. then after that, it just it vanished. What is there? Like magic. That trick was the best trick I ever seen in magic history. Wow. Well, the quantity of the magic is exhausting, and the quality has been out of sight. So far out of sight, it's made me squint. So I feel like I've earned a sit down. But before I do, let's have a look at what's coming up. It's all kinds of ridiculousness. Catherine reveals the secret and tricks of the trade. Have you worked it out yet? John's jumping coins are up close and magical. And watch what happens when Catherine goes undercover in another school. Will she fool the class or will they realise their supply teacher is still magic? Isn't that clever? Ooh. Each week I'm bringing you another of my new favourite magic movers and shakers doing tricks in their own cribs, yards and front rooms. We call them the wannabe wizards. So I've got my comfy chair. I've got my computer thingy to watch them all on and I've got my trendy angle poise. Let's do this already. We ask you to send in clips of yourself performing your best magic tricks. We receive loads of clips from all over the country. Each week, I'll be choosing a favourite wannabe wizard and showing them to you guys. My wannabe wizard this time is Lewis from Lancashire, and he's the straight man in a magical double act. Hello, everybody. I'm going to be doing a trick called the Wonder Rope. But this isn't just any ordinary rope. It's a magic rope. You see, if I just hold it and this way and slide my hand across, it stiffens all the way through, no matter where I hold it. Now, if I could just ask my assistant, Fido, to come along and hold this for me while I get the instructions. 
Oh, you broke it. I've had it two minutes and you broke it fried up. Okay, I'll try it again. Oh, you're no use. Fido, go. Alright, I'll give you one more chance. Okay, hold this while I get the instructions. That's it, I've had it with you. Fido, go. You trot along and get your dinner. Go. Okay, now I'll just show you how it's done. You just hold the rope like that, slide across, and there it is. And that's the wonder rope. Fido! It sure was, and that's why Lewis is my wannabe wizard. Now it's time for Catherine to reveal the secret and tricks of the trade. With the plastic card balancing on the edge of a cup like this, Catherine will show you how to balance the three coins on the end of the card without them falling off. Come on, have you worked it out? How many have you got it? Does it work because Catherine has a steady hand? Nah. Is it about how fast you put the coins on the card? <laughs> no. Want to know how it's done? Fill the cup with water right up to the brim. When the water touches the card, it makes something called surface tension. This causes the card to stick and allows you to put weight on the end of the card. If you take it slowly, that is, Catherine's being very careful. OK, so that's the first one balancing on the card. Now for the second. There's two coins balancing. No water spilt. No wobble on the card. Here comes the third. Oh, good skills, Catherine. Did you get it? Are you amazing already? Now you've got something to impress all your friends with. Next it's time for John, who's at a car museum getting up close and magical. Hi, girls, how are you? Good. Good, honey, trying to work you. Uh, you're amazing already. When I've shown you this magic, you'll be even more than amazing. I'm going to show you a trick using some coins, and you can have a look at the coins. Just hold out your hand. Uh, you can have a look at these coins, and uh, yes, why not, Iliana? You can have a look at those coins. They're two pound coins. I, I haven't got any other coins. There's no extra coins, just four coins. Listen, here's what's going to happen we're going to try and make money change hands. Now, um, Thay, would you mind helping me with this one? I'm going to hold one of the coins. You just take the other three. John okay. has one of the two pound coins. Faye has the other three. I throw it up in the air and it vanishes and it appears over here. John made his coin jump from one hand to the next. A magical star. Check that coin for me. Ileana, make sure it's genuine. I'm going to take these. Now, you saw that one jump across, all right? You saw it jump across. This next one, you're going to hear jump across, all right? So you'll actually hear the next one jump across. And uh, can you hold these coins again for me? Is that all right? But if I, if I put them in your hand like this, don't do anything with them just yet. Just hold them like that. And can you give me that last coin? Now, here's what I want you to do for me, Fair. Can you very, very carefully get your other hand and just cup it over the coin like this? John has one coin. Like Faye has the other three. That's it. And then you're going to give the coins a shake for me. Can you do that? Give them a shake. A bit more. Give them a nice, good shake. That's it. Now, stop. Did you hear the sound change? I think that means one of the coins vanished. But don't look just yet. Listen to mine. See if we can make it arrive. Look, now I've got two. And how many have you got? You've got two as well. It's pretty amazing so far. Now, listen, you've seen one jump across and you've heard one jump across. This time, you're going to feel one jump across. OK, we're going to take all four coins. Anna, would you mind helping me with this next one? Can you hold your fingers like this for me? Excellent. Uh, maybe this hand. Wonderful. And I want you to hold those coins exactly the same way that I'm holding mine, all right? Exactly the same way, just like this, by the edges. That's it. Don't drop them just yet. I'm going to hold mine here. You're going to drop your two coins into your hand, and I'll drop my two coins into my hand. And as soon as you drop them, grab hold of your two coins so I can't switch them. Are you ready? One, two, three, go! Now, did you feel anything? Them dropped into my hand. Do you feel anything now? Have a little feel. It's like one. It feels like one. I told you she'd feel it. Open it up. Now you've just got one coin and I didn't touch anything. You dropped it in. And in my hand, I've got three coins. That's pretty impressive. But you know what we're going to do now? You're actually going to get a chance to um, make it happen yourself. We'll count them into your hand. You've got one, two, three, four coins. How many have I got? None. None. Excellent. Look, if I make those into a little pie like this, here's what I want you to do for me, Anna. I'm going to ask you in a moment to take one of those coins and to lift it 
and place it into my hand. And as soon as you place it into my hand, I want you to close your hand tight so that there's no way I could sneak any coins back in there. OK, can you do that for me now? Lift it in under my hand and then immediately close your hand tight. Excellent. How many have you got in your hand? Three. How many have I got in my hand? One. One. Excellent. Watch. It vanishes. Completely gone. And how many have you got now in your hand? Four. Four! They're speechless. I'm speechless. John's speechless. I'm speechless. He was just like making it vanish. I had to place it into his hand and he just made it disappear and jump into my hand. I didn't like feel anything. Amazing. Really Fantastic. Did you see that? You didn't. You need to watch slower next time. Next up is Catherine, and guess what? She's about to be a supply teacher to fool another class. The disguise is on, the hidden cameras are set. Enter year five. They don't know it yet, but Catherine's about to take a magical lesson about water that's very fishy. None of them have recognised Catherine in her disguise or noticed the hidden cameras in their classroom. But will they be able to hide their excitement once the magic begins? Hello, everyone. My name is Miss Goldston, and I'm going to be taking your class today. So we're going to be doing a bit of science and a bit of geography mixed together. We're learning all about water purification. Now, I've got a bowl of water here on the table, and this is going to represent the water that we buy in the supermarkets. Watch that bowl of clear water very closely. That's where the magic's going to happen. Now, depending on where this water comes from, it has to go through different purification processes to make it clean enough for us to drink. Now, not many people realise this, but a lot of our water starts off very dark and dirty and contaminated. How did that happen? She's turned it from clear water to dirty water right before their eyes. And depending on where that water's come from, it has different chemical elements in it. Catherine started to muddy the waters of this lesson, but they still don't suspect a thing. Now, for example, our purified water often comes from lakes, it comes from rivers and wetlands, and you can find something <gasps> called magnesium in it. Now, magnesium is a chemical element, and I've got some red sand here, and this is going to represent the magnesium. OK, so we're going to put this into our water. So she's poured the red sand into the bowl, and it's dissolved into the dirty water. There we go. Now, another chemical element that's found is iron. And I've got some yellow sand here to represent the iron. So again, this is going to go into our water. Go, and again, we're going to mix that in. Now the yellow sand has been added to the dirt in that water. There we go. And finally, I've got some blue sand here. Now this blue sand is representative of the chlorine that's found in the water. OK, so this is going to go in as well like that. And again, it's all mixed up together. Catherine's added the blue sand to the water, and that's dissolved too. The magic's about to happen. Keep your eyes on that bowl. As I said, all these chemical elements are dissolved into the water. So for the water to be safe for us to drink, we need to take all these chemical elements out. They're with you, Catherine. They totally believe you're a teacher. Now reel them in with the magic. So there are a lot of different processes that we can use for that. Now, one of the processes is called a pressure filter system. Now, this is when all the water is put into a big tank and put under pressure and squeezed through a filter. There's nothing in her hands or up her sleeves. Now, this is often used to remove magnesium. It's actually brought back to its solid form. Like that. She's pulled the red sand right out of the water, and it's dry. Isn't that clever? Now, another process that's quite often used is something called a slow sand system. Now, this can take a long time. It can take up to 10 days for the water to pass through the sand. But this is used a lot to take out the iron. Now she's pulled out the yellow yeah. sand, and it's dry. The class can't believe it. And there's more where that came from. And now the final process that's used is boiling the water. Now, when we boil the water, it actually separates the contaminated water with the pure water and allows us to take out all the chlorine. 
It's been purified by some pure magic. Like that. Now, just remember, everybody, that was just a demonstration of how you purify water. So I don't want you trying to purify puddles outside or your bath water at home so you can turn it into drinking water. That does give you some idea about how our water comes from the source and into the bottles of water that we drink. The water's dirty and now it's time for Catherine to come clean. So, would you all like to know a secret? Yes. Yeah? Yes. What you just saw then, that wasn't really just a water demonstration. That was actually a magic trick, because I'm not a teacher, I'm a magician. And all of you have been set up by your parents and your teachers, and you're all being filmed right now. There's a camera over there, and there's a camera over there. Catherine's trick with sand used sleight of hand and it deceived my eyes. But how did the class see it? At first it was, I was like really confused because we in my mind I was like, how could she do that? She don't know what happened. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> can't believe it. They couldn't believe it because the coloured sands disappeared into the water but all came out dry. All the chlorine. That was weird because you can't do that because it all dissolves in the water. An incredible trick, and this class didn't realise... <laughs> See you later, but until then, if you're at school and you think something magical's occurring, maybe you'll find yourself shouting, Help! My supply teacher is still magic!